Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 6, Lesson 9, Game Instance Class. In this lesson, we're going to explain the purpose of the Game Instance Class, and then we're going to demonstrate creating a Game Instance Class and creating a main menu and a player ship selection screen. And I may have touched on this in a previous lesson, but the Game Instance Class is the only class that remains persistent as long as the game is running. So when you launch a game, the game instance class is spawned, and then it remains until you close that instance of the game down. So in a multiplayer game, each client or each person playing the game has their own game instance. And because it remains persistent, even when you change between levels, it's commonly used to control data that needs to be passed between levels. So in our game, I wanna create a ship selection screen where the player can select the ship they want to use, and maybe even eventually we'll add some modifications to that ship at that screen. And then when they start to play the game, all those settings will be passed into the level so they can play the game with the ship that they've customized. So this is what we're going to do for our game. We're going to create a game instance class, and we're going to create some variables to store some ship settings that we can select at the main menu. And then when we start the game, we'll pass all those settings into the game so the player can have that ship. And like I said, you can also use this to set up additional customization. So you can set what weapon the player starts with, special attacks when we set those up, ship modifiers, and other various things. So again, there's a lot of customization here, and I really want you to take some time and make your game your own so you don't necessarily need to follow on exactly with what I'm doing. I just wanna make sure that you understand the principles and that you can apply those to your project. So here I am back in my game and like with the last lesson, I've already done all of the work and there's a live stream of that on my YouTube channel. So you can go ahead and watch that live stream. I will give you a warning that Unreal Engine crashes about halfway through that live stream, so I had to go back and redo everything. So just a reminder, save often so you don't lose all of your work. So for the rest of this lesson, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna talk through what I did in that live stream. We're at a point in the course where you should be able to grasp a lot of these concepts just by seeing them and hearing me talk through them. But if you do need a little bit more help, you need a little bit more understanding of how things are working, feel free to go and watch that live stream and you can get all the information as I'm building it. And one additional benefit of watching those live streams, like I said before, is you get to see me work through problems. So you get to see kind of my thought process of how I'm building these things. And I think that kind of helps you understand the thought process and how to work through issues. So let's start by just showing you how it works and how it looks when it's working. And then I'll go through and I'll break it down step by step. So when I press play, I start at this menu screen, which I've created. This is my main menu level. It's got the name of our game, which is Space Fighter. It's got a ship here in the middle. We've got start game and quit game, which we've already programmed these for previous games. So that shouldn't really need to be a refresher there. But then we have this ship select screen. And here I can cycle through a few different ships that I've set up. And then when I start the game, I'll be playing as the ship that I selected. So let's break this down step by step. First of all, I created a new level called Main Menu. And in here, there's just a few things. We have our player start location. We've got our target point, and this is where we're gonna be spawning those ships into the level. Got a little spotlight to make it look kind of cool. And there's this nice sunset behind it. But other than that, that's pretty much all that's in this level. In here though, we have gone to the world settings and we've overridden the game mode to menu game mode, which is a new game mode that I created. And in here, all we're doing is a couple things. The first thing is we're going to create a main menu widget and we're gonna add that to the viewport. And then we're gonna spawn a ship. And this starts with ship 001. And you can see I've created three different ships here. I have ship 001, which is this orange and black one we've been using so far in this project. I created this red ship as ship two, and then I created this blue ship as ship three. And these are all children of BP player ship. That way I didn't have to reprogram them. One cool thing though, is I've made a few modifications to each of these ships. So ship one is 
pretty much exactly as it was. Ship two, this red one, I increased the movement speed to 3000 and lowered the health to two. So this is a fast ship that can die quickly. And then ship three looked a little bit slower and tankier. So I decreased the movement speed on this one, but then I increased the health to 10. And then also with each of these ships, you can customize where these left and right weapon arrays are. So this one's a little bit more spread out. This one's kind of in the middle. And then for ship two, they're really close together. So this just allows a lot more customization for each of these ships. So I already have made my game instance because like I said, I've pre-recorded this and already done all the work. Uh, but to make a new game instance class, there's just two steps. The first one, we wanna make our game instance. So we'll create a new blueprint and we'll type game instance and we can see it here. And then you can name it whatever you want but I've already created mine, so I won't do that again. And then the second step is we need to go to our project settings. We need to go to maps and modes. And then here on game instance, you need to set that as the game instance class, whatever one you set up. So we can see here, it says BP game instance. Yours probably says game instance, which is just the, the base class that's programmed in there. And so this will tell Unreal Engine that when we launch our game, this is the game instance that we wanna launch. And on my game instance class, all I've done is created two variables. The first one is of type BP player ship, and I've just called this selected ship. And the second one is an array of ships called ships array, again, BP player ship. And I've added three elements to this array, one for each of my ships. Now you can add as many as you want, as many ships as you wanted to create, as you wanted to have available to your player. And you can just add all of those to this array. But I think three is good enough to at least get started and be able to demonstrate the concepts here. The next thing I did is created this main menu widget. Again, this is nothing new. We've done this before, but there's just a few elements here. We have the name of our game, which is Space Fighter. We've got this buttons array here for the three different buttons that we created. And then there's a second widget on top of this called WBP ship select. And again, pretty straightforward here. When we start game, we want to pass in the name of our level. When we select quit game, we want to quit. And when we select that ship select button, I'm calling this function show ship select, which shows the ship select widget and hides the other two widgets. And then I have a hide ship select, which hides the ship select and shows the other two widgets. So it's just the opposite. So this main menu widget is pretty straightforward. And we can see here, this is that ship select widget. It's just got three elements. It's got a left button, a right button, and a back button. When we select the back button, all it's gonna do is it's gonna get the menu and it's gonna call hide ship select, which will hide this widget. This is just a function I'm calling when we construct this widget to create a reference to our main menu widget. And then I wanna get a reference to game instance. And then I've just got a couple other events here. One is for on clicking of the right button and one is for on clicking of the left button. And really they're just the opposite of each other, but it's a little bit complex and maybe overwhelming. I'll talk through what this is doing but if you need a little bit more help, like I said, again, you can go and watch the live stream where I programmed all of this, actually programmed it twice because it crashed halfway through. Or if you still need a little bit more help kind of understanding what's going on, feel free to drop something in the comments and I'll try to answer your questions as best as I can. But when we click the right button, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get a reference to that array we set up on our game instance. And there's a couple different conditions that could happen here. The first thing and the most likely is that we're going to want to get to the next ship in our array. So I created this current index that's gonna keep track of whatever our current ship that we have selected is. This first branch is handling just checking if we are at the last index of our array. And this is important because when we get to the last ship in the array, we wanna be able to cycle back and start again at the first ship. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check if we're at the last ship. If we are, we're going to get a reference to the zero in this array. 
and we want to set selected ship on our game instance class to whatever that index of the array is, whatever that element is. So this first part here that I have highlighted is handling that. It's checking, are we at the last index? And if we are, let's get a reference to whatever the zero element of this array is, and we'll set selected ship to that. Now, this is only gonna happen at the last element. So the far more likely case is that we are going to want to get whatever the next index is. So we get our current index, we find the next one in this array, and then we're gonna set selected ship to that index. And this will happen most of the time until we get to the end, and then we'll cycle back. Now, all of this is just setting whatever the selected ship is, but we want a visual representation of that ship in the ship selection menu. So the first thing we're doing is we wanna destroy whatever ship is currently in the menu. If you remember, when we first started our level in our game mode, we spawned ship one into the menu. And that's what we see here. This ship is spawned right when we start. So we want to destroy that ship. And we already had a function on our player ship called death processing. So we'll call that on that ship. And there should only be one in the level. So this should work just like this. If there was a situation where maybe you had multiple ships in the level, you might wanna do this differently, but this should work for this implementation. Once we destroy that ship, we wanna go back into our menu game mode and we wanna call that function again, spawn ship. But this time we wanna call it on selected ship, which we've set up here. And the last thing we need to do is we need to handle setting this index to whatever the next index is and that way, when we press the button again, it'll start over with the right ship name. So we take this function again, is this the last array index, which again, checks our current index if it's equal to the last index of our ship's array. If it is, we'll set current index to zero. And if it's not, which again, should be the far more likely case, we'll just increment current index. And that way, if we press the button a second time, the index will be one higher, which you mean this will go to the next ship in the array. So that's basically how the right button works. The left button is mostly the same, but it's the opposite. So we're gonna be going the opposite way. So the first thing we wanna do is check if current index is zero. And if it is, then we wanna find the last index in ship's array and set that to selected ship. In all other cases, which is gonna be most of the time, we're going to get the current index minus one, which would be the, the ship before this in the array. And we'll set that one to selected ship. Down here at the bottom, pretty much the same. We want to destroy whatever ship is already in our scene. Then we'll spawn selected ship, which would be the one that we set up here. And then the last part is if our current index is zero, let's set it to the last index of our array. And if it's not, we'll just decrement it. And all of that will make these buttons work in this fashion so we can cycle through our ships. But there's one other element that we need to do. And that is once we have the selected ship saved into our game instance, we want that to be the ship that we spawn into our game. And to do this, we already had this spawn ship event that was set up. So all we need to do is make one slight modification we want to get a reference to our game instance. We want to find selected ship, and then we just pass that in here to spawn actor. So in your game, it probably looked like this. So once we have a reference to selected ship, we can just pass that in here. If you've been following along so far, you may be getting one additional error, and that's just one more thing that we need to do in player ship. We're still using this death processing function, but in this scene, there is no camera actor. So what I've done is I've just created a validated get for our camera. If it is debt valid, we're going to call ship destroyed on the camera. And if it's not, we'll just pass in to this function. And this one is just destroying all the weapons and then destroying the actor. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully you learned something in this lesson about how the game instance class is used and how we can pass variables into our level. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.